Hello everyone. We feel the vibrations in our day-to-day -day life, whether it be while traveling, while operating machinery equipment, or even while feeling a breeze of air. It is difficult to quantify the effects of these vibrations. They are random in nature, and you cannot predict the excitation with certainty. It is extremely important that design structures and machinery sustain these forces of nature without failure. Hence, it is important to interpret the effects of these vibrations correctly. In this video, we will study what is different about results reported in random vibration analysis and how to interpret them correctly, how to extract useful results in Assis Mechanical. Ready? Let's go! The output quantities of the random vibration analysis that are used to understand the behavior of the structures are stresses and strains, directional displacements, force reactions. Since the input of the system is statistical, the output of random vibration analysis is also statistical in nature, and hence the quantities just mentioned are statistical in nature too. Like the input, the output also has a Gaussian distribution and zero mean value. The results such as displacement, stresses, strains, and forces are reported within the confidence intervals. For instance, the stress output by the solver is one sigma or one standard deviation value with zero mean value. These results follow the Gaussian distribution. The interpretation is that 68.3% of the random response will be between zero and standard deviation value, with equal probability for positive as well as negative occurrences. For higher confidence, ANSYS Mechanical gives an option to choose a scale factor, and we can increase the scale factor to any value, such as two or three sigma. So if we increase it to two, then 95.45% of random response will be between 0 and 2 sigma value. And if we increase it to 3, then 99.73% of the random response will be between 0 and the 3 sigma values. This discussion applies only to the components of displacement, stresses and strains, and forces which are assumed to have normal distribution. The derived quantities, such as principal stresses, stress intensity, and equivalent stress, cannot be easily evaluated because the stress components cannot simply be squared together in a statistical sense. There is no longer any specific sign of the stress component as the distribution is centered about zero mean, and the probability density function of the derived stress is not Gaussian. The way in which derived stresses should be evaluated becomes problematic, especially since equivalent stress is a commonly used color stress measure in evaluating the response of a metal structures. Because of these limitations on equivalent stress, a special algorithm by Siegel Manufacturer is used to compute a meaningful value of equivalent stress. The probability distribution of this equivalent stress is neither Gaussian nor is the mean value zero, so probability values of 1, 2, and 3 sigma discussed prior no longer hold. However, one can still use the 3 sigma rule, multiplying the RMS value by 3, which will yield a conservative estimate of the upper bound of the equivalent stress. Apart from derived stress results, the deformation component results are also statistical in nature. So while the co contours of the one sigma directional deformation are available, including the other multiplies of sigma, the deformed shape is not available. When reviewing the random vibration analysis results, it is important to keep in mind that the coordinate system settings for the result object is by default set to solution coordinate system, and this cannot be changed because the results only have meaning when viewed in the solution coordinate system. Displacements are always in the solution nodal coordinate system, while stresses and strains are in the element coordinate system. 
The element coordinate system for the shell elements in a surface body may not all be aligned consistently when using the default coordinate system. Consider using an average results for post-processing of element results, stresses and strains instead. Alternatively, one can use the element orientation feature under geometry to properly orient the element coordinate system and in this case the directions will be consistently aligned and average results can still be utilized. In mechanical, you can insert response PSD tool for random vibration analysis to control the frequency sampling of response PSD, also called RPSD. Before discussing more on the RPSD tool, let us see what is response PSD or RPSD. Response PSD provides spectrum response of a structural component subjected to random excitation. When a response PSD probe is inserted, then the response PSD is plotted as a square of the spectrum response over the excitation frequency range. The plot provides information as to how the power is distributed as a function of frequency. The square root of the area under the response PSD is the so-called root mean square RMS value. It is one sigma or one standard deviation value in a statistical term. The centroid of the area under the response PSD probe with respect to frequency is referred to as expected frequency. The expected frequency can give you an indication if the output or power of the response is occurring at or near a dominant natural frequency. This can sometimes help an engineer understand which frequencies are contributing the most to the response and then one could consider changing the design to shift or even eliminate that natural frequency. It is better to use response PSD tool compared to standalone response PSD probe because the former offers more options for the frequencies of the output. Now, let us proceed to the demo and focus on interpreting their results. In this walkthrough example, we will show you how to set up and interpret the results of random vibration analysis correctly. The table mounted inside a mobile equipment such as food track is subjected to random vibrations caused by the road conditions. Let's see how these random vibrations of the road are affecting the directional deformation and normal stress of the table inside the truck. Also, we will see how response PSD can provide an engineer great insight to the response of the system under applied load as a function of frequency. Let us get started. Open WBPZ file table PSD random vibration that has predefined random vibration analysis workflow on the project page and predefined modal analysis in mechanical. Open mechanical. The table is made of structural steel and we will not change the material assignment. Insert element orientation to make sure the element X axis is aligned with the solution coordinate system since we would like to post process the results in X direction later. Under surface guide, select the table top face and apply under geometry, set axis to Z. Under edge guide, select the longer edge of the table and apply under geometry, set axis to X. In the analysis settings, change maximum mode to fine to 30. It is usually recommended to extract all modes whose frequencies span in the range from zero to 1.5 times the maximum input PSD value, which is in our case 500 Hz. Hence, we will be extracting the first 30 modes and thereby extracting up to 750 Hz in our modal analysis. Under output controls, stress strains are set to yes and normal forces to constrain nodes. We are going to use the default mesh. As you can see, the fixed support is already applied to the four circular edges on the bottom of the four table legs. Solve modal analysis. Create mode shapes from the table generated after the solution. Highlight all the rows in the table and create mode shapes. 30 total deformations will be added to the tree. Click on solution information and change solution output 
to participation factor summary. We can see that there is a significant participation factor for mode 1 in x direction. Hence, we should see a high contribution of mode 1 in overall response of the structure. Right-click on the solution and evaluate all results. The total deformation animation shows the deformed shape of the mode 1. Now coming to the random vibration analysis, we are going to use G acceleration as a function of frequency as input PSD. PSD acceleration excitations are commonly reported in terms of G, which is the standard acceleration due to gravity. The G acceleration value for 10 Hz is defined as 0.01 G squared over Hz, and for 50 Hz it is 0.05 G squared over Hz, which remains constant until 100 Hz. Finally, for 500 Hz, the G acceleration value is 0.02 G squared over Hz. In the details tab, we can see that boundary condition is defined as fixed support and direction for the load is x-axis. Solve random vibration system. Let's insert some of the results. Right mouse click on the solution and insert directional deformation. Set the orientation to x-axis and scale factor to one sigma value. Right mouse click on the solution and insert normal stress. Set the orientation to x-axis and scale factor to one sigma value. Right mouse click on the solution and evaluate all results. The directional deformation result indicates that there is 68.3% probability that deformation in x direction will be at or below 3.46 mm. This finding may be useful if there is another piece of equipment next to the table and we wish to prevent the table hitting the additional equipment while driving. As we mentioned previously, the results are statistical in nature, so there is no deformed shape associated with the results plot. If we change the scale factor to 2 sigma value, the results indicate that there is 95.45% probability that deformation in x direction will be at or below 6.92 mm. Similarly, for 3 sigma scaling factor, there is 99.79% probability that deformation in x direction will be at or below 10.39 mm. Next, let's plot normal stress in x direction. The 1 sigma value result shows that there is 68.3% probability that the normal stress in x direction will be at or below 105.7 megapascals. Recall from the lecture that the equivalent stress in random vibration analysis is calculated using a special algorithm called siegelman falcher method. Right-click on solution, insert stress and equivalent stress. Evaluate all results. We can see the value of equivalent stress obtained is 94.45 megapascals, which when multiplied by 3 gives us 283.35 megapascals. This value gives us a conservative estimation of the upper bound of the equivalent stress value. Let's see how the response PSD can be used to get more insight into the system's response. As we mentioned earlier, the RPSD provides a spectrum response of a structural component subjected to a random excitation. The RPSD plot provides information such as how the power is distributed as a function of frequency. Right-click on the solution and insert the response PSD tool. Select the vertex on the table corner and insert response PSD for displacement in x direction. Resulting response PSD shows peaks at frequencies of the mode 1, 6 and 12. Note that the RMS percent is 100%. RMS percent is the percentage of the root mean square of the selected frequency range over the entire available frequency range. In this case, the frequency range is set to full and RMS value is 3.58 mm. There are options to limit the range to user-defined values, which can further aid in understanding of RMS response over the specified range 
such as around specific natural frequencies. A notice in the details of response BSD that the reference can be relative to the base motion or absolute, which will include the base motion. For relative motion, the response of any location in the structural component is calculated in terms of a relative motion between the base and the structural component and vice versa, whereas the absolute reference includes the base motion. A good check of proper setup is to extract the output response RPSD at the location of the input PSD. The input PSD and RPSD curves should match. Let us see how to do this in our example. In our example, the remote point is predefined using the edge of the bottom of one of the table legs. Under solution of the random vibration, insert another response PSD tool and insert response PSD. Set the location method to remote point and set the reference to absolute. Next, set the result type to acceleration and result selection to x-axis. Set the acceleration in G to yes. Evaluate the result. You can see that response PSD curve matches with the input PSD curve. To obtain more accurate RMS results, we can increase the clustering frequency points. This feature will increase the number of frequencies generated for both sides of the natural frequencies for the response PSD results evaluation. This completes the walkthrough example. Let's summarize. A random vibration analysis is a type of linear dynamic analysis that studies a structure's response to random vibration. This analysis is probabilistic in nature since both the input and the output quantities indicate the probability that they will take a certain value. The results of analysis are statistical in nature. These results have Gaussian distribution and the solver returns one sigma or one standard deviation values. This means that 68.3% of the random response will fall between one sigma value and zero. We can increase this probability by scaling the results by a factor of two or three to get two or three sigma values. 95.45% of the random response will fall between two sigma value and zero, and 99.73 3% of random response will fall between 3 sigma value and 0. One key difference from the other analysis is that directional results from the solver cannot be combined in a usual way due to their statistical nature. The x, y, and z displacements, for example, cannot be combined to determine the size of the overall displacement. The same holds true for the other derived quantities, such as principal stress and equivalent stress. Because of the non-applicability of equivalent stress, a special algorithm, Siegelman Fulcher algorithm, is used to evaluating the equivalent stress. Response PSD is plotted as a square of spectrum response over the excitation frequency range, thus provides information on how the power is distributed as a function of frequency. It can also give us valuable information about model response at a certain frequency. With this knowledge, one can understand the importance of interpreting the results from a random vibration analysis and how to do the same. I hope you will find this video informative. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.